As is well known, Russians are good at making tanks, airplanes, ballistic missiles, submarines, automatic rifles, and similar military equipment. In Hollywood movies, they also praise black caviar and vodka produced in the undergrounds of Siberia by Ivans in collaboration with polar bears. A true find from Russia. Who is it? What is it? Where does it come from? Be sure to watch the video until the end, and we will examine it from all angles together. Let's open it up, delve into its insides, and of course, listen to the wonderful tube sound. An aura has formed around us that we are incapable of producing quality consumer electronics. As for the highest level of expertise like, no, high-end audio, I won't even mention it. And there is only a very small degree of truth in this. But all these offensive arguments against Russians fade over time, like tears in the rain, when you see the artwork of our engineers from the Moscow region, a sound laboratory. Sander Bird, in our language, is the storm petrol, before you is a giant with a luxurious design weighing nearly 40 kilograms, designed and created from scratch, without looking back at anyone, with a proud label, made in Russia. Unexpected, isn't it? When I look at its design, I feel an urge to classify it as a work of art. Italian or Canadian engineers, as its very essence screams at you in the face. I am so stylish, sophisticated, yet at the same time maximally brutally fundamental. Press steel control button and I will teleport you to Sound Valhalla. Just give me, please, stable, good power acoustics and of course quality content. And I won't disappoint you. It seems to me that this is how he speaks when you look at him. Warm, you can warm up. When unpacking, if you haven't looked yet, I definitely recommend visiting my channel and taking a peek. I emphasize the painting. It has a very deep color with high quality texture. I often pay attention to cars with poor secondary painting on the road when, for example, a fender or door differs from the overall color scheme. Such moments occur due to unqualified repairs. Many do not notice such details, but for me, the details are important. As far as I know, such a noble and expensive color palette has been achieved precisely with the help of top-class automotive specialists. And I readily believe this information because all the exhibits I have seen look extremely high quality smooth and impressive, especially in the color burgundy. Have you seen the cherry salad in person? No. You've missed out a lot, friends. I recommend taking a look. It's not a bug, it's a feature, the screen. At first glance, you want to twist it, but all the controls are on the left, specifically one knob, which is also the power button and the source selection element. It's not easy to get used to it at first, but then you understand the design concept of our engineers. One must enjoy the design in its entirety. There is no place for unnecessary elements here, just as there are no physical buttons, which have been replaced by three touch-sensitive buttons. They are almost impossible to find at first glance, but that is the point. The side edges have cutouts for the tubes. Agree, it's an unconventional solution. Typically, tube amplifiers are open, which I have never liked from a design perspective. Let's take a look at the back of it. As is usually the case, this part is often where corners are cut. But here, friends, as we can see, everything is maximally cool and impressive. Note that the terminals are Nutric, which are very expensive, high-quality products that, by the way, Nordost uses in their cables. I never tire of repeating this, which cost hundreds and even millions of rubles. The gold-plated RCA is, again, of the highest quality. We don't have a phono preamp on board, but we do have a trigger and a headphone input. By the way, its placement is a bit unconventional. You usually expect to see it from the front, but the facade is so beautiful that I don't even understand where I would fit it if I were in the shoes of the SLA designer. Also, pay attention to the speaker connection terminals. I have encountered such things in Boulder, something similar in very expensive amplifiers, truly top tier class, and here they certainly do not disappoint. Unlike the Boulder models, which, as far as I remember, do not allow for banana plugs. Here you can use both banana plugs and spade connectors, whatever you want. You could take a wire, strip it with a knife, and stick it in so that parts stick out in all directions. But you shouldn't do that, friends. It is better to use quality connections in such serious, expensive items because the cable makes a difference. And of course, the power input, my friends, comes with grounding, not like how the Japanese usually prefer it. What should you do when you buy a good quality amplifier? Of course, replace the power cord. 
and the cherry on top, the hour meter of the lamp. The view from the back is like that of an expensive sports car, and it is precisely these ribs that exude power from which two transformers peek out. But let us open it up quickly and see for ourselves how our engineers have packaged and arranged everything. I just can't understand one thing. Why aren't the bolts painted in the color of the casing? It must be difficult to paint them, and in any case, this is a tube device that often needs to be opened. Thus, the lid is heavy, neatly and solidly made, and robustly constructed, unlike some foreign high-end audio devices that are practically like a battle. Shield or a screen against some parasitic emissions. Oh, friends, wow, what power, what sensuality, perhaps because it is so red. As we can see, the engineer's concept for the Sanderbird is thoroughly thought out. The amplifier is divided into two parts by a horizontal partition, which also serves as a shield, protecting sensitive components from parasitic electromagnetic interference. At the very bottom is the power supply with a toroid and chokes. Naturally, the configuration is dual mono, which allows us to enjoy the stereo signal with minimal distortion. Recently, I opened the Parasound A21 and noted how well their transformer was packaged. But looking at our hero, I proudly note that the output transformers made by the engineers at Esselab using the most complex winding techniques are wrapped even more carefully with love and are even more beautiful than those made by Taiwanese masters, who, by the way, are among the best in the world, as we know. The boards are also shielded which is already extremely rare in such types of equipment. However, if we are talking about an uncompromising approach, then this is how everyone should operate who aspires to the proud title of high-end audio. The 6550 tubes are assembled at the warmest factory in the world, aptly named Svetlana. Naturally, according to individual parameters and exclusively for slab, unfortunately, the exact load at 8 ohms is unknown, but the stereo power is 60 watts, while Mono is nearly 100 watts. At first glance, this may seem low to young audiophiles, but when you connect the amplifier to very demanding speakers like the B&W 800 series diamond, you will realize that even 60 watts can drive and sound as powerful as many foreign devices rated at 200 watts at 8 ohms, which nervously bow their heads and step aside upon seeing our shining bird with lightning on its feathers, with an unstoppable desire to outpace all competitors. Pay attention to the input board, which houses a fully relay-based volume control and also on high-precision resistors. Again, the screens are made of nickel alloy to eliminate interference. Three pairs of mini transforms, one for the input of the balance direct, one for the input of the fourth and fifth XLR sources, and a pair for the recording output. Complete feng shui. I still want to show you the hour counter because it looks great. It's so nice that the SLA engineers take care of us. Very much in our style, very Russian. By the way, some change the lamp even after 500 hours, while others you see go up to 1200 hours and everything is fine. It all depends on luck. I am confident that the design and technical aspects are clear to everyone. This is top-notch craftsmanship, and the proof of that is the completely different people who see it on my stand. Some are connected to music, some are not in the loop, but everyone, absolutely everyone, has noticed and asked where this device came from and what this English, Italian, American, German, Canadian, and even Scandinavian brand is doing in my test. And no one could even think that this is our dear one. 